Okay, so you finished your exams and you're in that weird summer limbo. You're not quite sure what university you're going to yet, but what you do definitely know is that come September, October time, you're definitely going to be starting a university maths course. First off, congrats, you've done it. You finished your A-levels and you're about to start that exciting three-year course in a brand new city, studying the subject that you love. Now, uni maths is a little bit different. The lectures are fast, the definitions are abstract, and there's nobody going to walk you through the basics anymore. And now you're surrounded by a load of other people who understand maths as well as you do, if not even a little bit better. But the good news is there's a lot you can be doing over summer to make that transition way easier. If you're new here, I'm Ryan, a Cambridge educated mathematician and ex step marker. In this video, I'm going to be breaking down some of the most useful things that you can be doing over this summer to prep for your degree without burning out, doing way too much work or trying to learn half the course before you even get there. If you're ready, let's get into it. Now, first things first, make sure you're comfortable with the basics. Now, since you've done a maths degree, I'm hoping you're somewhat comfortable with this, but you don't need to be a master at every single detail of the A-level course. But what's really useful is to be good with some of the more practical skills. So I'm thinking you need to be top-notch on your algebra, your differentiation and your integration, anything along those lines. You don't need to be a master, you just need to be good enough so that when you're in the middle of a lecture, it's not gonna be a hurdle. It's not gonna be slowing you down from understanding because there'll be a lot more difficult things that you need to understand. Most university courses will recap the basics, but don't expect the kind of depth or breadth that you got when you were in an A-level course. It will be very quick, it will be very fast paced, and there will be an expectation that you understand the fundamentals of mathematics. Now, some universities do offer bridging courses or sometimes called catch-up courses in areas like statistics and mechanics, because they do know that students come from varied backgrounds. Now, in my year, we had a mechanics catch-up course, because as far as I'm aware, a lot of the international courses don't include as much mechanics in their, their syllabus. Now, on top of having a look at the practical skills, it's probably also worth having a look over the general range of A-level topics. You will definitely see them again throughout your degree course. So having a bit of knowledge on them can give you a bit of a head start when it comes to jumping into your degree. Now, a few areas that might be worth brushing up on are binomial theorem, indices and surds, logs and exponentials, complex numbers, vectors and matrices, parametric equations, implicit differentiation, sequences and series. A good one is curve sketching because that comes up in nearly every subject. Now, again, you don't need to be a master at these. You just want to brush over them to make sure that you're comfortable with them if they come up again in your course. Now, a small little admin tip is that if you created small condensed summaries of all the A-level topics when you were revising for your A-levels, it's worth keeping them and you can just brush over them when they come back up in your degree. Always worth doing this and even do it in your first year, second year and third year, they will repeat. From what I know, this applies to all STEM subjects, not just maths. So tip number two is again, another pretty obvious one, but some universities send out summer work that's meant to be done before term starts. Sometimes it's just a checklist to make sure that you've covered all the necessary topics that you'll need when you jump into the university course. Other times it's a set of questions adapted from the first year course that generally go well beyond A-level and even step. Or it's maybe just a reading list, some books to read over just so that you're up to speed on what they'll expect of you when it comes to your degree. It'll show you the kind of reasoning and level of understanding that will be required of you from the start of your degree. In case you're curious, I've added an example that's used by Cambridge University. It's widely available. Not all colleges use it. They generally sometimes use their own, but it gives you a bit of an insight into what they might look like. Now, please don't panic if these are really hard. That's kind of the whole point. Universities are trying to prepare you for what your degree will be like. Just spend some time thinking deeply about the problems. What don't you understand about it? What do you understand? Part of the process is struggling through and either making it out or learning something along the way. Okay, so tip three is something you've probably considered but not really taken too seriously or not looked into enough. And that is looking through the first year course outline. Now, you don't necessarily wanna be looking for things you're super interested in here. You wanna be looking for things that you've not actually seen before or not even heard of, because these are the things that are gonna catch you off guard when you start your university course. So, you wanna be looking for things like, for me at least, it was numbers and sets, group theory, and then mathematical analysis. They will be taught in the first year because they're on the course outline. You'll be expected to pick them up really quickly, and it's a brand new idea to you. It can be quite tough to go from never having heard of this thing before to doing complex proofs and analysis with these ideas. For me, this was group theory. I'd never heard of them before, and in the first lecture, they rocketed through the definitions and the examples, and I spent the whole lecture series just trying to play catch up. And even now, I don't really understand groups as well as I should, but a few hours spent before I got to that first lecture 
would have saved me so much struggle for the next few weeks afterwards. Now I wanna make it clear, don't, don't master these topics, just kind of try and get an understanding of what they are and why they're used and why they matter to us as mathematicians. It will just give you a bit of a boost when you get in there so you're not just confused and befuddled before you even start. So in the first half of this video, I talked about how to be better at maths, essentially. The second half of this video is gonna be slightly different. It's gonna be how to prepare mentally. Going to university is a tough challenge. It's difficult for many different reasons, making friends, imposter syndrome, and just w w learning when to take breaks. And these next few tips, if you wanna call them that, are my advice, my, my true advice for how to make university a more enjoyable experience for yourself. So I'm gonna start with tip number four, which is all about imposter syndrome. Imposter syndrome is very real. No matter which university you end up going to, at some point along the way, you will probably experience imposter syndrome. Very, very few people are immune. They're either that singular top student at your university, but there can only be one. They're just super laid back, or most likely, they're just faking it, faking that confidence, and they're experiencing the exact same doubts that you are. Now, you're going to an elite university, and the chances are, when you went to school, you were one of the top students in your class. And what we often do, me included in this, is tie our self-worth to how good we are at maths. But then, when we get to university, chances are we're not gonna be near the top, and that can really be a rough adjustment. You've went from being the top to not quite the top anymore, and it can maybe feel a little bit disheartening, but it doesn't need to be that way. And I'll be completely honest, that feeling of imposter syndrome never really goes away. It comes and it goes, sometimes you feel amazing, sometimes you just wanna quit everything and go to bed. It won't ever go, but it eventually will dampen down and you can get comfortable with that feeling, knowing that everybody else also experiences it. And one thing to know is that universities aren't dumb. They went through so many candidates and they know who belongs to that university and who doesn't. So trust me, you do belong there as much as everybody else does. And here's the thing, just because you're great at A-level maths doesn't mean you're gonna be great at every kind of university maths there is. And that's okay. At university, you get a chance to specialize into loads of different niches. You just need to find something you enjoy and try and pursue it. Don't get bogged down with trying to be amazing at every single course. You don't have the same goals as all your classmates. Some wanna go into research for a particular topic. Some want high paying jobs. Some wanna go out and do completely different things to you. That's okay. Another thing you need to know about imposter syndrome is that every year there will be a mythical genius. This is a person who claims that they are amazing at every university topic and they do no work to back it up. But most of them are either exaggerating, they're secretly going away and grinding away all the different sheets and all the different topics. I've known people who keep this illusion up for quite a while and they often end up either doing really badly or completely failing each year. There is very few people who are actually amazing without doing any work. My advice is just be honest with people. It, it's, it's better for your mental health yourself and for others. Be honest to yourself and to everybody else. When you're struggling, say you're struggling and ask for help. So over summer, you just want to disconnect from the fact that you don't have to be the best at maths to have a great self-worth. You're still going to one of the top universities. Just because you're not top at that university doesn't mean that you're not still one of the top mathematicians in the world. Be proud of that. Okay, so tip number five is one that I should have definitely taken to heart much sooner. It probably would have changed how I saw the whole of first year. This accompanied with the previous tip as well. Now, it won't apply to everyone, but for those who are a bit socially awkward, me definitely included, even sort of in front of a camera, I'm a bit socially awkward, it's quite easy to end up isolated. When I was at university, I had a few friends who I'd see at lectures, and then we'd go for meals and we'd chat, but that was kind of it. When I was struggling, whether it with work or with imposter syndrome, I was generally doing it alone. So here's my best piece of advice. Build genuine friendships, whether it be inside or outside of maths. You can teach each other stuff and most importantly, admit to each other when you're struggling. That, that's key because you found a lecture difficult, maybe they did too, and you don't need to feel so bad about not really understanding it. This is one of the most powerful things you can do at university for your mental health. But what can you actually do about this over summer? Well, your university will probably send out a list of people's emails who are on the course and maybe similar to you. For me, it was people at my college, or there might just be a big group chat. So what you can do is try and reach out to a few people that you think you might have some similar interests with 
and try and just start talking with them. It will make the transition into university much easier. You can build on those friendships, make some deeper connections. Now, section six is a bit of a different one. Just, just take a break. As people have said online, go on a hike, touch some grass. You've just spent two years doing GCSEs, then went straight into A-levels, did two years of A-levels. And for the first time, depending on when you go into university, you've probably got quite a long break. So take some time off, go to a different country, go out with your mates somewhere, just take some time off, have a break. You only get so much opportunity in life to take such a long break. Don't spend your whole time panicking about your first year. Just take it easy. There's plenty of time for that later. Part of your preparation for university should be taking some rest. Take a rest after A-level, recharge, and then when you get to university, you can start and hit the ground running. So yeah, going to university is A, incredibly exciting, B, yeah, incredibly stressful. But remember, everybody else is in the exact same boat you are. We're all just kind of winging it, hoping things go well. Now, let me know in the comments if you need any brushing up before you get to university. What topics are terrifying you? You never know, maybe I'll make a video on it before you get there. And yeah, I'll see you in the next one.